Today we are in downtown Denver, Colorado, and we are staying at the Brown Palace. We're gonna do high tea, we're gonna eat some fabulous food, and we can't wait to explore this awesome hotel. The afternoon tea is actually held in the atrium of the Brown Palace Hotel. So as soon as you walk in, you can hear the piano music playing, you can hear the clinking of fine china. It's pure elegance. We can't wait to explore. From the bottom of the atrium, all the way up to the stained glass roof, I've never seen anything quite like this hotel. Perhaps one of the things that we love so much is how steeped in history this hotel really is. Presidents have stayed here, actors, musicians have all stayed here. Not only is this place historical, but it's also extremely famous. And it's also full of Denver history. Even the unseekable Molly Brown stayed here multiple times. This hotel, it's a bucket list item for us. This is the second longest running hotel in Denver, only second to the Oxford Hotel, which if you've seen that video, we stayed there as well. But this place was designed by the same architect that did the Oxford Hotel. So it is the second oldest hotel in Denver. Can't wait to explore it with you guys. We're gonna do afternoon tea, we're gonna have a nice dinner here, and we're gonna start off with a room tour to show you guys all around our accommodations for the evening. All right, we got a car key. And here we go. Oh, wow. All right, huge tall ceilings. I love this light too. I love the archway leading in to the room. That is some really awesome character. And then come on in. Here's our little seating area. King size bed. All right, ceiling fan, that's amazing. I love the trim work. Is this Mrs. Molly Brown, the unsinkable Molly Brown? I have no idea, but my imagination says it could be. A little kind of a mini bar area. Let's see, you got the refrigerator. Oh, yeah, not fridge. stock, but you know, you can put stuff in there. It's, it's big enough. Okay. Yeah. A couple of uh, tumblers. A nice little Keurig though, or, or Lavazza for the coffee. Yay for the coffee for the morning. And real coffee cups, I like that. Oh yeah. I love all of the lamps. And if you guys haven't Did noticed, I just want to show you something. This is the only switch in the room. Everything else you have to turn on lamp by lamp. So all the lamps oh. by side the bed, everything else is turned on individually. And right across the street, if you guys can see, that's the Wells Fargo building. Just right across the street from us. That is so cool. That's the lobby right there. That is so neat. So fun. Yeah, but look at this. And we're right near the corner of the Methodist Church right there, which is very beautiful as well. We each have like a bedside table, kind of like dresser drawers here. And then there it is. Really? Uh, all right, I thought they were going to be the really fancy client and like close <laughs> themselves. But if you need a secretary, you need to write yourself a letter, that one closes itself. Okay, they <laughs> are the fancy kind. I love it. If you can see, you do have USB plugs, so that's nice. Right beside both sides of the bed have them, as well as the desk right here. When you pull the chair back, which look how kind of fun that chair is. That's it's neat. Fun chair, yeah. And, and then you've got more plug-ins right there, along with USB cables or ports as well. Now let's check out the closet. You got a mirror here, you got another mirror there, so everybody gets their own mirror. We're super safe now for our valuables. And this room came with some robes that we get to use. Aren't these nice? And I love the logo. I just love their logo. The Brown Palace Hotel and Spa. Can't wait to give that a try. And then of course the other amenities you do have, if you can see back in there, you have a luggage rack as well. You've got extra blankets and pillows, plenty and of hangers. Who's got iron? If you need to. If I mean, you need this, to, it's here. This place is very elegant. That's kind of the first thing that pops off to me, but also there are the modern touches. I mean, if you look right next to the bed here, you've got the um, kind of the lights that you can use, reading lights for, you know, at night. Yeah, there you go, Liz. See, Better. look at that. Ah! Uh, I, I blinded. But then, like Andy said, there these little touches of just elegance. Check this out, guys. That's like a real brass doorknob. I love that. You know what else I love? 
all along the door frames and the archways and the trim work, you can see where it's chipped and been repainted year after year. Just speaking to the age of the wood and that nerdy moment of, yeah, this is like older wood. And when it's time to relax, chill. Hi guys, here I am in my elegant sitting area. I love this. I feel like I shouldn't have my shoes on this. All right, getting off now. We're back to our foyer, even down to the tile on the floor. But it's time for the grand reveal of the bathroom powder room. Kind of like saloon doors. I like that. <gasps> oh, come on in. Okay, the wallpaper is totally different in here. Still textured wallpaper. <laughs> that is so neat. All right, that, that speaks to the quality, and it takes a lot more craftsmanship to hang wallpaper like this than it does that cheap slap on wallpaper okay so just bear with me y'all but love it okay love the light the mirror you got the pedestal sink very elegant marble floors all right love the love the baseboard trim in the black and then <laughs> once again their logo i love this logo it's just very elegant love it and this shower is amazing. Okay, the door swings out, awkward. But yeah, man, you've got the marble shower. I don't know if y'all can see that trim work in there. And that's a very nice, elegant touch. Oh, and it's got the rain, rain shower too. So you've got like the marble rain. shower head and the rain. Well, that's kind of a rainy shower head and too. Like, look at this. So over here, you've got hair dryer. Sorry, I can't get over there, guys. But you get the hair dryer, extra towels, towels here toilet here. Liz and I are both standing in here right now, but it's kind of tight uh, for two people, but then you got the toilet paper holder there, and then you turn around and I... Voila. <laughs> and then there's Liz on the other side of the doors. Well, yeah, because it was more roomy out here. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. Like, it's got the, like, I don't know. It's like a seal. Like, you would yeah. seal like an envelope in wax, but yeah. bam, like into the toilet paper. I've never <laughs> before that's awesome and now for a little bit of self-care it's time for high tea in the lobby and orange bird is coming with me now we're going downstairs for high tea but guys can't you hear that piano i mean i just feel so elegant and refined right now it's crazy look what i just found guys the brown palace one mile above sea level guys we're on the fourth floor and then it's the stairs that go up to the fifth floor. Look at that. That is so cool. So the CU Denver engineering students put a lot of thought and equations and to figure out where the mile high marker was, this plaque designates that we're 5,280 feet above sea level. Let's start with the piano music is absolutely beautiful. It sets the mood. Beautiful leather bound menus. The service is all set up. Look at these. Look at these absolutely stunning thin teacups oh, and then yeah. you've got the creamer you've got the the, the tea thing I, i'm sorry i don't know what it's called <laughs> you've got it's not a tea cozy i don't know if that's butter you've got cinnamon cinnamon the raw or brown sugar they have a gluten-free menu we didn't ask for one up front so <laughs> life fail right but i'm just man i'm so overwhelmed with fact how elegant this lobby is and the piano music, you can hear it in our room, but oh man, it's just beautiful. Okay, so we ordered, we're doing the Royal Palace. <laughs> it includes a Chandon Brut, so a good look. And I have the Chandon Rosé, because why not try something a little bit different? And then I'm doing the Masala Chai tea. We had about five different options for the tea. I'm doing the Masala Chai, and Andy is gonna do classic Earl Grey. And we each get our own pot, which is kind of cool. One of the other really neat factors is that they, they ask if you wanna start off with the, the champagne or sparkling wine. Uh, also, Liz being gluten-free, they are doing a separate menu for gluten-free. So know that if you have a food allergy, you can express that to the server and they'll take care of you. So I'm very excited to see what comes out for, for both of us. Wow, okay, so I've got the Brut. Mine is dry, but sparkly and refreshing. And I have to figure out how to get my Blackberry out of there without looking stupid. <laughs> and I have the Rosé. Super, ah, it's a little bit sweeter, very, very good. But yeah, how, 
those of you with the proper etiquette, how do you get the blackberry? Do you just chug it right at the end? I don't know. So I just want to take this quick second to show you guys. This is, we're right here in the middle of the lobby. Look at this. Two different kinds of scones, classic buttermilk, and you also have pear cardamom. For the gluten free, it's a white chocolate chip and classic buttermilk. For the sandwiches today, we have curry egg salad, English cucumbers on white brioche, and then we have Southwest chicken salad. Same sandwiches for the gluten free, but they're all made with gluten free breads and spreads, and instead of the chicken salad, you have a shrimp salad. For the desserts, you have caramel chocolate truffle balls, the German raspberry strudel bar. And then flourless chocolate ganache cake, and then a lime guava tart. So they did the gluten-free plate on top for Liz. Yeah. Instead of chicken salad, she got a, a shrimp salad. And then down below, I get all the same stuff. It's just gluten-free, or sorry, not gluten-free bread. Uh, I do get the chicken salad and the desserts. I love it though, because the non-gluten-y stuff is up top. Okay, and the gluten-y stuff is on bottom. So nothing's gonna fall onto there's my a plate food. In the middle too. And there's a plate in the middle. But nothing's gonna fall onto my food. And I love this china. I don't know if it's their special china, but it is elegant. I love it. This is the first time I've ever done an afternoon tea type thing. So I'm gonna take the tea uh, and I'm gonna try it just straight like it is. I'm not gonna put anything in there yet. I just wanna give it a whirl. This is the Earl Grey. Wow, that is so good, just as is. It's very delicious. All right, I've got the masala chai. Cheers, because I'm also gonna do it just straight tea. If I can do black coffee, I can do this too. It smells wonderful. Oh, yeah, I love it. I don't need creamer. I can do this without creamer. So it occurred to me that everything might not show up very good on the plate here when I was filming it. So I wanted to show you guys the different sandwiches. There is the, in front here, is the cucumber finger sandwich, then the chicken salad, and then the egg salad. And I have had the chicken salad, because you get two a piece. So I've had the chicken salad, and I've had the egg salad. I've not had the cucumber salad. Let's see what we think, and let you guys know what I like the best. The cucumber is absolutely refreshing, delightful. But I gotta say, my favorite so far is that egg salad. Everything else is very, very good. I mean, there's, it's hard to really pick, but the egg salad is beyond amazing. I demolished my cucumbers. I still have egg salad and shrimp salad. I'm gonna say I think the egg salad's also my favorite. That, that shrimp salad is pretty darn good. It's a dark chocolate truffle, and it is just like rich and decadent. This, I just pulled off uh, of the plate. So this is kind of the first thing that I've really grabbed as far as dessert goes. Um, obviously we have the, the scone back here that uh, I'm gonna try with the jam because yeah, scones, tea, jam, it all goes together. But this guy right here, I've had a bite of it. It is so good. It, it's uh, kind of, if you can just think of it like a cake, like a cornbread cake, think of it like that. It is delicious. And it's so good, yummy. And then we got all of these like like cookies and chocolate stuff and- You got a little tartlet that is so stinking cute. I wonder if it's key lime. All right, so we're gonna take a break. We're gonna see what the tart is. Here it is, it's pretty. Is it It's got lime? like little green things on top. Let's, let's give it a, yeah, Liz wants to know if it's key lime. So here we go. That is good guys. So far my favorite, but there's more to go. I'm gonna pour myself some tea, but one of the things I wanted to talk about is as I'm pouring this, so make sure I'm doing it right. Yeah, there we go. The other fun thing is, is that you do not have to worry about your pot of tea getting cold or empty because they come around about every 10 minutes and they refill the pot of tea with fresh hot water. So that way you have plenty of tea during your experience. It does, it's not diluting the tea either, so it's, I love it. Like I just I have hot tea at the ready. <laughs> and speaking of tea at the ready, I think I'll go ahead and sugar in the roll and I'll do one lump. I was wondering if I was a one lump or two lump guy. Apparently, I'm a one lump guy. All right, so I just had a piece, my first piece of chocolate, and this is divine. It just the, the sea salt in it and the chocolate, it's so smooth. It almost melts in your mouth. Like it's melting in my fingers right now. It's so they nailed the chocolate. <laughs> I'm 
unfortunately I wasn't able to finish it all. So we do have these three left here. Liz has got a to-go box as well, which is really cool that they'll do a to-go box. But look at these guys. They have like little gold flakes. Excuse my finger, but they have little gold flakes all over it. I'm looking forward to enjoying these later. Yes, it's going to be very good. Something else that I wanted to point out to you guys is look at this. This is all real silverware. Hopefully I'll get it to focus. There it goes. That's, this is all real silverware. And the, for the tea serving, this is also real silver. And the sugar bowl is also there we go, real silver. So you get the silver service with your tea. Wow, that tea service was amazing. Was so good. It was it was very fancy. I mean, with the real silver yeah, service that you that get. That was super cool. And the tea was just delicious. I, Man, my masala chai tea was amazing. I am so full. Of, like the finger sandwiches, though, well, those are way more desserts than we eat. In we couldn't city. finish everything. So now that the tea service is basically over, they're gonna like set up jazz musicians. Yeah, I can't wait to hear that. They're gonna have a live jazz band down there. And the nice thing is, is that the music you can hear it all the way throughout the hotel. It is so. I mean, it was like an elegant backdrop to be able to hear all that piano music in our room. I don't know if you guys heard it or not with the microphone but I can't wait to hear the jazz music you're there from 4 30 to 7 30. here's kind of a top down but there's the piano and the drum set and that's where their jazz band is sit setting up right there and everybody's finishing up with their tea I love all the history about this hotel nerd alert you see this guys this is the brass pressure gauge that they actually had in 1892 is the original one and it's showing the pressure from the artesian well down the stairs you see it moving so cool the natural spring water flows from our own artesian well located 750 feet below the hotel that was good water now the brown palace was inaugurated august 12th 1892 by the knights templar go figure right but for high afternoon tea, you can actually get a bottle of Chandon Brut with your high afternoon tea. And I wish I had a bottle that had that Brown Palace Hotel logo on it. I love that thing. Now the Brown Palace used to be the tallest building in Denver, but no more. The Republic Plaza built in 1984, it's 717 feet with 56 stories, is the current tallest building in Denver. Which is really cool, the contrast of two of what used to be the tallest building in Denver and now the actual tallest building in Denver right, right across together. the yeah, right across the street from each other. It's really neat. Nerd alert! There is so much history in these window displays at the Brown Palace. But man, rooms from three dollars and thirty cents a night for a single person, six sixty for two people. One of the other interesting facts about the Brown Palace is that presidents have even stayed here. There's Bill Clinton. Actually, lucky number. 13 U.S. presidents have stayed here, guys. From Teddy Roosevelt to Woodrow Wilson, all the way up to George H.W. Bush. Crazy. So here's something interesting too. It says, enjoy restaurant hopping without ever leaving your palace. So what's really neat is breakfast, lunch, and brunch at Ellington's. You've got casual dining at Ship Tavern. You've got afternoon tea, in the atrium lobby, and Fine dining at Palace Arms, ooh la la. And then drinks and cigars at Churchill Bar. But we are eating at Ship Tavern tonight. Also, when you show up to the Brown Palace, you have this kind of this, I don't know, porter cachet ish that you can pull under. And then you go this way to the Brown Palace. But over here is a Holiday Inn Express, which is also part of the Brown Palace. Now we keep learning things. I love these window displays. Because y'all, the Brown Palace started keeping beehives on their rooftop in 2010. They had three rooftop hives, and now they have five. With whimsical names, including the VJ Bee Suite, the Buzzingham Palace, and the Mile Hive City. I love it. Mile Hive City? Yeah. Yes. It's a dad joke. Well, there's the Navarre. Built in 1880, it first started as a school for girls. It later became a brothel and a bar. And in the 1960s, it was transformed into a jazz club. 
The Navari was built in 1880. The Brown Palace Hotel was built in 1892. Guys, there was a tunnel underneath so that the two buildings could share coal. In 1904, the Denver Mayor Robert Speer said no to gambling and prostitution and it became a respectable men's club at that point. Since then, the tunnel has been sealed in with masonry and the Navari still stands, but it houses art now. Now, a little bit later on tonight, we're gonna actually eat at the Ship Tavern. But what I wanted to point out is the stained glass in this window, and then behind here, you actually have more stained glass in the restaurant itself, but it's protected from the elements because of this outside glass. That is so cool. Now the Brown Palace goes down three different streets. It is shaped like a triangle. And you have all this beautiful stained glass, brick, and even some animals carved into the side of the Palace Hotel. We've got to find those. At the Palace Arms, you can enjoy a fine dining or cigar bar experience if you want. It looks really nice in there. We're at the Ship Tavern. Can't wait to see what they offer. I love the fact that it looks like a wave on my bench. So cool. This restaurant actually opened in 1934 to celebrate the end of Prohibition. I love the theming. I think it's really funny that Edna Bocher, wife of Claude Bocher, he went to New England, bought her all of these model ships, and that's how this landlocked restaurant got a nautical theme because she wanted to display all of her ships. And you can just look around and see them. They are super cool. I got the club and I got sweet potato fries. Look how massive this is. It's like it's four enormous. huge pieces. I cannot wait. And let's see what Liz got. It's a burger. It's a burger. It's totally a grass-fed burger, but it's, it, it, you know, I just like the whole, like, it's a feather boa. <laughs> My dinner was absolutely, I gotta show you, pretty much finished the whole thing. Yeah, there's a little, few slices of bread left. But pretty much finished the entire thing, but at around 8 to 8.30 here at the Ship Tavern, Guys, they have another piano player that comes in, but this is the same piano player from the jazz band and also the same piano player that was playing during uh, the afternoon tea. It's just good food and good times here. Everything though was spot on for taste and the cook was amazing. And did I mention these sweet potato fries are amazing? Because they are. It is a new day here at the Brown Palace in the atrium, the beautiful stained glass, the gorgeous lobby, the flags are flying, but it is also checkout time. In 1958, Monty Montana, a Western film star, rode his horse Rex up these stairs. Allegedly, he was late for a meeting. And he just needed a little bit more horsepower to get up there. And right here in the lobby of the Brown Palace, every single year from the Western Stock Show, the prize-winning bull or steer is actually showcased right here. And that's no BS. We had such an amazing time here. Oh, we really did. The high tea was amazing. The food was really good. This hotel is so beautiful and so elegant. So happy that we were able to check this off of our bucket list. Definitely a bucket list item for us. I mean, we're history junkies. There's we love so stuff like this. There's so many nerd alerts here. I had such a blast. If you will, give this video a big thumbs up and share it. Let's go ahead and ding that notification bell. That way you're going to know every time we go live or we put up a video. And until next time, get out there, have some fun, and, and we'll, we'll see you on, on the flip, flip side. side.